and we're here at the Greenwood campus in Hodges, South Carolina. So happy to have you with us. Uh, we purpose not to waste your time. We thank you for joining in, I think, into our virtual campus in Greenville and also to our virtual campus and to our campus in Greenville. I just did a, I don't know what I called it. What was a commercial infomercial that we were working on? So I'm trying to get myself together and I told them to go live. So you're catching me with my hair not on right now. So we're, we'll roll on from there. Uh, but a couple things I want to bring to your attention as we go into the month of, of um, Christmas, uh, the last month of the year. And every first Sunday we do in Greenwood, we have tea and coffee fellowship. That begins every first Sunday at 1030 and goes until 1050. And what it is is really to give you a chance to have friends come by. They may not even be members, but if they have time to stop in and just have fellowship, have tea, coffee, have a Danish or a muffin or something and just talk. And if you're a member, sometime when you do church, you don't get a chance to fellowship. You wave at someone, but you haven't really got a chance to speak to them, to know them. And so it gives us a few minutes to fellowship. And so don't forget tea and coffee fellowship this coming Sunday from 1030 to 1050. Morning worship will begin at 11 a.m. And we were just doing an infomercial for three for three campaign. And I was sharing with them that 100 percent. And we have started out and we in the ministry, I believe in April will be seven years old. And I don't think we've done anything. Of course, I'm not 70. I might look it, but I'm not we have done something to really help the community. And what I did is I challenged the congregation to find a passion. I don't have all things listed, whether it's shoes to Africa, clothes to Haiti, whether it's adopt a school program, or whether it's the Greenwood Food Bank. Find a passion that you would like to be involved in, because then if you work from your passion, then it's not a challenge. Find volunteers, get your friends to help. Get your friends. I think we do something with uh, the community bank and we have a couple, uh, I think assistant living. Don't nobody like to be in a nursing home no more. Assistant living where we take color, coloring books and uh, toiletries and things like that. Um, you don't have to be a member of the ministry to help serve the community. Don't hesitate to come. You can always get in touch with us. You can hit us up on social media or you can come by the church and we are collecting cans for the Greenwood Food Bank. Uh, what is it? Non-perishable items that you can give. And we have done a tremendous job. And, and I, I told the church beforehand, I said, hey, listen, <laughs> this is not an event. This is something we have to do. We have to get involved. We can't, we can't. Sometime in the church, you're suffocating. And it appears, and people want to serve, it's like everybody's doing everything and I don't have anything to do. Well, here's an opportunity to do something. Here's an opportunity where we can work with elementary schools and you can go and read uh, to an elementary school student or uh, to a class. These are ways to give back and ways to minister to help bring a daylight to people's lives. I was just reading, not telling anybody where to go and not where to go, but someone is going to jail for the next 25 years because they were intoxicated not at the place they were trying to get in. They were there, and because they didn't get in, an altercation broke out, and the man went to his car and came back and killed the man. We don't have to do that. And they locked the door to protect everybody, and the security guard went to the back, and the man drove around the back, and shot the security guard. And the security guard was trying to protect him as well as others and protect him from himself. And the security guard has died. We, we have a chance to right the ship. We can't do anything about the past. We can't do anything about what just happened. But as people of God, and as people of God who should be praying, we can pray and live a life that people can see. Life is not wonderful when we're all trapped in violence or anger or we're so built up with emotions that they explode at the wrong time in the wrong place. Okay? Because there's no one out here, and this is why um, when I've 
was seeking the Lord of what to call the church because the original name of the church was Rosa Sharon Pentecostal Church. Rosa Sharon Holiness, what was it? Rosa Sharon Pentecostal Holiness Church of the Apostolic Faith and Covenant. That was way too long, way too long, Jesus. And I know we got the second generation of the first generation, <laughs> but way too long of a day. And so when I asked God, I said, because what should the house of worship really be? And for about five years, I traveled um, with a good friend, uh, Bishop Noel Jones, and, and got a chance to sit under Bishop Jakes. And the Lord said, it's a house of reconciliation. You, neither I, are so saved that we don't have challenges, that we don't have problems within ourselves, within our families, within our children and with our grandchildren. And things will happen in your family that you thought would have never happened in your family. And we as people of God, we have to have a different response. We cannot respond through everything, through our feelings and emotions, and God forbid our opinions. And so when I ask the Lord, what is the appropriate thing that we can do to build a ministry beyond tradition? Because my roots are apostolic, Pentecostal, holiness. I never shy away from it. They talk about me. <laughs> they talk about me good. In fact, I will be uh, at my second home church, uh, Grady Emanuel, uh, this coming Sunday. I will be speaking for their Founders Day. We'll be here, but I'm going to be there. And uh, I have to change my method because I like to talk and they don't they don't care them about me talking <laughs> so, you know. oh if they're watching they'll go tell it I'll hear it tomorrow you know. <laughs> but I'll be there at 11 o'clock so if you're part of the virtual campus don't hesitate come on out come on out be a part wear your mask we're sitting six feet apart and we're going to enjoy because next year will be 70 years that the founder Dr. S. L. Campbell established um, Hodges Rosa Sharon Pentecostal Holiness Church of the Apostolic Faith Incorporated. Uh, 70 years, I believe it's in April when she came over here, uh, 70 years ago. So we want to do a major celebration and honoring um, the legacy of the ministry. But we have to go from tradition to rules, from rules to communion and fellowship with God. And when you do that, God says, the, um, the tradition of men make the word of God of no effect. And I think sometimes because in the ministry, and I want to say this up front, uh, many of our elders and bishops and preachers and pastors and, and apostles and archbishops and prophets and prophetess, sometime, and I can say this because I've been in this since I was eight, we have sucked the air out of the church. We have people worshiping us, praising us and getting our titles right. And I think sometime, not all, we have lost what our mission is. Our mission from God are servants. As a leader, I should not be so big that you can't come and talk to me and you can't touch me and we can't have a conversation because I'm Mr. This and I'm still in the spirit. Jesus had the most of anybody and he walked around among everybody. And he was nice. And so sometimes when you're serving the sheep, as a leader, you have to smell like the sheep. I saw a guy who made a tremendous impact on my life, the late great district elder Willie Lee Johnson. He said to me, he said, young man, I know your roots. He said, you can't handle bloody people and not get blood on you. You can't love people and not feel their pain. You can't serve people and think you're better than people. Your title means nothing to God. God sent us to get that one that's broken, that life has hurt, people have wounded, those that have been forgotten. He said, when you didn't feed the hungry, you didn't feed me. When you didn't close the naked, you didn't clothe me. So we have to, here at the House of Reconciliation, we have a passion for people. I truly believe in a hand up. But here, we don't give handouts. We give you information. 
we support you, but we will not carry you. And I know somebody just frowned up, but let me talk to you. When Jesus met the man at the pool of Bethesda, he didn't tell the disciples to get a cart and pick him up. He told the man, pick up your stuff and come on. To really walk with God is about accountability, responsibility, and acceptability. Because you never know where people are coming from. You don't know how they've been broken and how they've been hurt. So the church, the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ is the last place anybody should be judging anybody. So on that note, we're going to go into the lesson. We are talking and dealing with the winner series, Purpose Over People. And tonight it's going to be a little thick. So somebody write, it's going to be a little thick. Purpose Over People, our basic scripture is coming out of Proverbs 11 and 1. And Psalm 67, stanza 6. For those that like to read, you can write Isaiah 55, 8, and 9. I give those to you again. Proverbs 11. It says, a false balance is an abomination unto God. And, and what it means is a dishonest approach, a dishonest heart is a false balance because look how God made you and I. Two hands, two ears, to eyes, to arms, to elbows, to shoulders, to hips, to thighs, to knees, to ankles, to feet. God wants your balance. The problem is, it is unbalanced things that come in your life and my life that causes us to walk and function with a lip. A lip and we're going to address that um, this evening. And so here, here is a problem, and this is how it all came about. Uh, there was a group of people who was like, well, I'd just rather fake it. I'd rather be busy, and I'm doing all this. But the reality is you're avoiding dealing with you. And, and let me clear up something right now. People, a lot of people who are single say, well, I'm lonely. But then when you really deal with people, I hear a lot of people that are married say that they're lonely. You can't, you can't have it both ways. You can't be single and lonely and then married and lonely. The reality is what you call loneliness and empty is really time you should be spending with God. And getting before God in worship and in prayer and in communion and not leaving. And notice I didn't say ask for something and not leaving. But asking God to cleanse your spirit. This comes out of, um, God, what was it? Psalms, I think, 58, when David said, uh, I can't remember. He said, cleanse me, wash me. See, there's a time you go and you commune with God. But because of the atmosphere that we live in in earth and among each other, sometimes we get tainted. Sometimes the impression of a situation will linger in our minds. It says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquities. And it doesn't mean that you've gone out and committed sin, but I'm going to address some things. There are sometimes what you see, what you hear, and what you are told stays in your mind. So what it says is, I have an issue with my own reality because when it's time to deal with me, there's a problem. I can tell you what to do, but I have a problem when I am told what to do. So what happens is, many times God doesn't show up to the problem. Anybody want to ask me why? Because the answer doesn't solve the problem. Yes and no doesn't solve the problem. And I know there are people out there that well, I don't know, you know, lost now. No. When you go to God, remember God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. If you and I continue to have the same problem, we have not gotten the revelation or the spiritual prescription to prevent the problem from happening again.
if, if you and I are still running into the same walls and having the same stumbling blocks, we have not received the revelation of how to stay away from that. Because here, here's what happened. Sometimes you can help others and lose yourself. You give too much of you away. Family can take up too much of you. Your job can take up too much of you. Friends can take up too much of you. You can go cook for everybody else, but yet you have to find something to eat. I told you it's gonna be a little thick. Y'all want me to quit? Because we have some more people in tonight. I don't want nobody to go to shoot. shoot he talk about me. I can't run that fast. I've been in my hand all week. It's just now straightening out. I said, man, I can't talk about old no more. I'm right. And, and so what I want you to do is understand why this is important. Sometimes you can help others and lose yourself. And when you lose yourself, you lose your focus. When you lose your focus, you lose the goals that God has set for you. Now watch this. Every God, every goal that God has for you are just not spiritual goals. You, you can't be earthly broke and spiritually rich. It's, it's, it's not in the Bible. He said you'll have the poor with you always. But he also said the same gospel has been preached to the poor. Also, you can go to Hebrews, the fourth chapter, verse 1 and 2, and he says that ye should prosper when you mix it with faith. God does not come to die just for your soul. God doesn't want you hand to mouth, pillar to pillar. God wants you as an example of how to live a balanced life with him. Can I make it real plain? Sometimes this may happen because I myself was homeless for two years and I'm not blaming God for that. I'm, but the people of God should not be in the food bait line. God doesn't say I'm going to bless your hands and then you go get in the soup kitchen line. You're not working your seed. Now I told you it's going to be thick. You, you shouldn't be always having to borrow money. And old, what are some places? Money, money, money place. You should, you got, you need to get out of there. The Bible said be a good steward. Over. And by the way, for unto us, okay, here it is. This is, this is what I want you to get. Because we're going to go somewhere real quick. For unto us was the gospel preached. As well as unto who? I want you to write down two things real quick. Us and them. You're going to have to make up your mind which group you go. Because everybody heard it. For unto us was what? The gospel preached as well as unto them. Here's the kicker. But, everybody say but. But, the word preached did not what? So why are we so broke? Because you know what they told me, because my roots are apostolic, Pentecostal, holiness. I don't get to be here. Yo, yo, you know, you don't be so greedy. Don't be. Listen, the Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance to his church and church. If I don't have nothing, what in the world is my big head grandson and, and big granddaughter going to have? What are they going to have? I, can't get, I couldn't be a buy nothing because I don't want to get the big head. You stupid. I have to leave more than an insurance. Mm -hmm. All right? So we agree with that. Come on, let's put this back up. Let's put this back up. But the word preached did not what? See, the, the, the whole word, the whole chemistry is when the word gets in the earth and we are made from the earth, it should sparkle up something. And whatever that gift is that you inherited from your grandmother, your grandfather, whatever, that, that holy Bible, that holy word should stir up that gift. And it didn't profit them not being mixed with what? Because you know what? What happens when we hear it? The first thing it hits is our flesh. 
And when it hits our flesh, we hate the provocator because the provocator rubs us the wrong way. The provocator is like sandpaper. It's supposed to sand you down. And instead of you allowing it to sand you down, you get mad. I, 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 I want a preacher that's going to just preach to me the word of God and tell me how good Jesus is. And I had to break some faces. Can I get real with y'all here? I got about 15 minutes. I had to break some faces from, from, from my home church. From, you know, they don't change nothing. Here's my whole point. How many of you have a broken toilet in the house and don't change it? How many of you have a leaky car and don't get it fixed? Because see, if you don't want nothing to change, then don't change anything. If your light go out, leave it out. Well, then why is it okay to fix your stuff but don't upgrade the church? Why should we still be doing the same thing they did in 1940, 1950, 1960? Go get rid of the church, get rid of the toilet seat in the church, and go get you an outhouse. Because when y'all started, y'all had outhouses. Go on outside in the cold with no light. Oh, oh nobody want to go to that house, but we can't change nothing in the church. Because, see, somebody told me, you know, they still talk about you because, you, you know, they, they mad because you went down to Hodges and you tore down the pulpit. But, but it's still out there though you know they talk about my daughter my daughter 26 years old about to graduate college gonna be a registered nurse and they still talking about I got a baby I ain't got no baby I got a grown daughter who looked just like me too the devil wasn't playing on that one <laughs> I can't hide from that but I mean it, we'll hold, and then it's part of holding grudges well, what are you saying what are you saying it's because you're stopping your own growth it's okay for God you'll listen to God correct and tell somebody something every Sunday but when God talks to you do you have a spiritual ear to hear so, so here's what you, you lose your dreams and your ambition so you can serve until you serve out you, you ain't no good God was going to send Boaz all he got is the old tie you fill in the blank now because you ain't got no youthfulness to you. you. Oh, my knee, child. You know, I got this knee. Can you help me? I done sat here too long. God don't want you woe out before you get to the promised land. You're supposed to at least drink a glass of wine. Oh, Lord, we didn't say wine, did we? You're at least supposed to have them drink a glass of wine. Ain't nobody want to say that now. <laughs> he done gone too far. I used to make him mad. Because I am, I, my roots are apostolic Pentecostal hell. So y'all can show this to my mama. I'll see her tomorrow. I got to cut my daddy's hair. So y'all can do whatever y'all want to do. I'm 60 now. I ain't changing. And I said, I used to mess with him. I said, y'all, you know, y'all holding these people. Y'all against drinking. I said, the first thing Jesus did when he got 12 and got to, the, got to a wedding, he got him a drink. I said, yes, he did. But I ain't the one to tell you to get one. I ain't the one to tell you not. I had to upload some deacons, and, and <laughs> I had a problem with the scripture, because you know where you come from. And the scripture said, do not be given that the deacons could drink wine, but don't be given over to drunkenness. Then Paul told Timothy that my apostolic friends, they rubbing that part out. <laughs> he told Timothy, take a little wine for your stomach. So now, now, now I know what somebody going to probably loop this and say, that preacher say y'all can drink. Don't tell that lie. Now, if you're going to tell a lie, get me to say something, and then I'll stand behind it so you won't have to call it a lie. But he, here's what we're saying. You lose your dreams and your ambition. Here is where we are. We got about 15 minutes together. It's time to get off sitting and sinking on a stinking ship and I'm going to tell you why <clears throat> it's you versus you me versus me now and some people would call this prophecy it's not prophecy this is fact you have something that you have not done in God and God gave you a gift you have something that you have not done in God God gave you a gift everyone in here God has given you something that you have not worked on. 
because you have been too distracted and you have been drunken by the opinions of others. Whether that's helping your grandchild, your granddaughter, your sister, or your brother. Your attention and your focus is not on what God called you. Here is what I come to give you. If you don't jump it, if you don't jump ship, it will drown you. What does that mean? God may never take your gift and talent, but life will not allow you to use them. You will not have the cognitive ability that God has given you. Intellect and intelligence, spiritual insight, spiritual foresight. You will not have the ability, health-wise, mobility-wise, to carry out what God has given you. And one thing will not fly in heaven, woulda, coulda, shoulda. This is the season, as we enter into the month of November, to start working on you. This is a time for you to start finding your best you. This is a time to quit looking like an old maid. You can't ask God for a husband and then you look like his mama. Now, I'm, my roots are apostolic Pentecostal holiness. I, I don't mind telling you. You, 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 you. you keep that long dress on if you want to. I ain't saying you got to put on no miniskirt, but don't nobody want to marry their mama if they do something wrong. And you can meet me out back and I'll tell you what's wrong. You want something lively. Women, you don't want nobody looking like your granddaddy. Belly hanging over, he can't get around. He gonna die soon. And if you gonna marry, make sure he got some insurance. Cause he ain't gonna be around long. And if he ain't got number $10,000, you let him keep walking. You need somebody with a couple hundred thousand dollars. Don't get with somebody and then you just ain't got nothing. This is the time for you to level up. This is the time. Don't, and see, you got to get real with yourself. If you want to get married, this is the time to say, Lord, I want to learn how to position myself. If I wasn't on camera, I would tell y'all something, but I'm on camera, so I'm going to leave that alone. If you don't jump now, it will drown you. And you will get older, and you will remember these words, I woulda, coulda, shoulda, because everybody you help, they can't help you. And I can say this about my grandmother because at the end of the day, can't nobody take my grandmother from me. My grandmother gave me a gift that she got from her father that people hate, but you hate on. Because I, if I could have given it to you, I'd be a billionaire by now. And so what I've had to learn was accept the gift that I was given. And part of accepting your gift is accepting you. Now here, here's the kicker. When you will not do it, you enter into what I started with, purpose over me. You enter into self-manipulation. You know why? You fight your dreams. You fight the vision that God has given you. You fight the words when people come through and prophesy and speak in your life and say, you got a gift, you got a talent. They have said that about me since I was born. They say, how to mark on me. I looked my whole life for a big old scar somewhere. You remember, you grew up with me. He, he's, he's something different about him. Here's what you expected. You wanted everybody to be nice in your life, and they brought you pain. And I'm here to tell you that God is saying, this is the time for you to stop manipulating you. You're important to God. It doesn't matter if you're broke, don't have a dime, you don't have nowhere to live. Listen, you and I can have a conversation. I slept in a car for two years. I washed up at the Y, I washed up at hotels, I even took a shower in the rain. A backslidden preacher, I have not always been faithful to God. I'm open and honest about that. If anybody gonna tell my story, let, let me tell. I have not always been the best person and the best vessel. But what I can tell you, I know what it's like to return to God and I know what it's like when God gives you life and I know what it's like when God gives you your dreams back. So what happens is, when God starts blessing you, we got to stay away from something, and that word is self-absorbed. Don't make it about you. 
because most of the people that are part of Rose and Sharon knew I grew up here, my mother, grandmother was here, my father and mother came from here, and the worst thing I hate is being a preacher. Oh, God knows who, honey, child, poontain. If God didn't do what he did to me, I don't have a desire to be no preacher. Who know me? <laughs> I've been saying that since I've been here. This is my call. And if I am to live, I cannot deny my call. I thank God for my profession. But my grandmother prophesied to me and said, you can do whatever you want to do. But you're not going to be balanced or happy because you were born a preacher. And God anointed you. He didn't give you an option. You are here to help people. And he don't care about how you don't like it. Part of the reason I failed God was how the church treated me. And so that's why I can teach this being stuck is that you there's something in you and something that drew you to this ministry and something that drew you to this broadcast that God is saying, I need you to get back to you. I need you to believe in the principles that I have established in your life. If not, you cannot be happy if you keep self-manipulating yourself because you keep asking for pain, self-absorbed, full of pride, passion, performance, competing with everybody. It's not necessary. I don't have to out-preach anybody. I don't have to out-quote anybody. I just have to make sure whatever God has said that I need to say at this time is under his unction his Holy Ghost and it will make an impact in a person's life that's the whole point and when God is done with me on this moment at 730 hopefully then I go back to my profession this is my call this is my appointment and so what happens is suffocating we allow the voices of other people to suffocate us, preventing something or someone from improving. Stop saying you are failure. Stop telling your children and other people that they are failures. You can tell people there is a place for you to improve and develop in a positive way. Because suffocating makes the first a person feel trapped and oppressed. And sometimes it's not people. Sometimes your gift will have a fight with you. Your gift, the call that God has put on your life to either work in ministry or to work in the church or to help people. God looks at you and say, are you giving me your best? Or are you allowing the words of other people to dictate to you? Here's the thing. Can we get real deep here for the next five minutes? Here's the thing. You're afraid to jump. The second thing, you're waiting for the perfect time. The third thing, you don't know how to swim. Here is the thing. If you jump, and you don't plan to die, you will teach yourself how to swim. God is saying you've taken a risk on everybody else. When will you take a risk on your gifts and your talent? You hear what I'm saying? Because here's the danger. Here's the danger. God removes, remove Saul's anointing. Do you know what happened to Saul? He committed suicide. God has given you a gift. If it's greeting, if it's serving, God, do not sit here and let God. That's why I'm up here, sister. <laughs> I don't like it, but I know what it's like to live without God. I know what it's like to be hungry. I know what it's like to finally get your children and you ain't never had a place to live and, and you, you, you know you should go to church 
and I had to iron my children's clothes in an oven. People don't know where you come from. They don't know your story. I had all three of them, and they didn't have, they didn't have no bed. We didn't have none. I was just lucky to have, a, to have an apartment. And, and so I went and bought a blow-up mattress, and I had to go back at work, and they took the blow-up mattress and was jumping on it. And so that Sunday morning, I knew, especially going to my grandmother's church, I, my, my kids' clothes was wrinkled. And, and people talk about me, but I said I had a 1987 Honda Civic, two-door, three kids in it. And so when I got the clothes out, the clothes was all wrinkled. I had to iron them in the oven. Didn't have no cups to drink. So you don't know where people come from. People look at you and they just assume that you, you come up with a silver spoon in your mouth. And, 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 I, and let me say this, if you have something, you can't give that away. You can't let people run over it. You can't let people, I don't care if you got a shack in the backwoods, you take care of that shack. If you need a roof, call your insurance company. Tell them you got some hail damage on the roof and wind damage and see if they won't replace your roof. You just got to get up your, um, what do they call it? Uh, your deductible. Don't let people talk you out your land. You cut grass to pay the taxes. So what you have to understand is there's no perfect time to jump or swim. The time is now. Ask me why. You have seeds. Ask me what, what's so important about the seed. You got to study it to know when to plant it. You also got to know how to prepare the ground for your seed. And after you prepare the ground, you're going to have to learn how to take care of it so it can germinate. See, we want fruit and we want long-lasting things without roots. You have to put roots down somewhere. Your job is not a root. Your job is just a position and you have a title right now, but if it changed, you have no roots in the ground. The earth is the only thing commanded of God to give you something back when you sow into it. And if you are Mother Earth, read uh, Psalm 67, stanza 6. The earth is automatically, God commanded it. It is still holding to its covenant with God. Whatever is planted, reproduces. And there are some things in your life you need to understand with the seed and the studying and the preparation and the germination, guess what? Your seed will come up and take charge. Your gift will make room for you. You worried about acceptance? Worry about pleasing God. It will stop self manipulation because people will use you and hinder you so they can shine, but they don't have the gift that God has given you. And you honor God by coming to his house and serving him in the spirit of excellence. I'll give you this as I close. What you allow is what will continue. If you allow broken pieces and broken people and angry people and bitter people, if you're always trying to fix a tire that has a flat and a big hole in it, you will always be doing it because every five or seven miles is going to go down again. What you allow. This is a time in your life to examine who you hang out with, who you talk to, who's your friend. Are they reading books? Are they studying? Are they taking a course? Are they working on their recipe? What you allow, who you allow, what kind of programs are you watching? Are you watching something to educate you? Are you well-rounding yourself to be well-rounded? God wants you to expand your borders. 
Because if you want big things, you got to pray the prayer of Jabez, Lord, help me not to cause harm as you increase my territory. The problem is most people are hung up on what other people think of them. And what you've been told you couldn't do and what you were told you shouldn't do because then you always well, we don't have that anyway. Oh, the devil is a lie. Your assignment in God is bigger than any enemy that stands in front of you. If you get back to praying, get back to fasting, get back to reading your Bible, then it doesn't matter what storm comes. You're already connected to God. Let's put up, um, what was it, Hebrews 4 and 1. We're going to read that and we're going to close. Anybody got any questions that I can answer? Oh, can I give you this one? Can I, can I steal a minute and give you this one? Can I give you these two real quick? Remember I just said what you allow is what will continue. Don't let someone change who you are to become what they need. Don't let someone deprogram you. If they can't scale you up, then that's not the company you should be in. I tell you like I told my sisters, if they got to come live with you, then they ain't a man. I know that didn't go over well, but that's true. You got a house. I don't care what I got. You want to be the head of the house? Get the bills. Oh, I know it's some men pissed off at me, but it's okay. Okay? Because we're, we have made women get out of their role. Women are supposed to support you. They're supposed to say, Hercules, when you come home. Oh, that's a big daddy. Oh, child, I got to have the biscuits ready. She out there busting rocks just like you. So I tell people, if you got a little, uh, 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 no, no. That may be why my two daughters are not married now. I'd be like, if he can't take care of you, I can't take care of you and him. So you got to pick between the two. Because if you got to be at my house with them babies, <laughs> and, and, and somebody probably going to have some baby kids too, y'all ain't going to be tearing and scratching up my walls, eating up my refrigerator. I can't even get no drink of Kool-Aid. And I think women should look at men and say, can you take care of me? I will work with you. Because I teach men this, and I'll give you this. Just let me steal a minute. I asked young men, I said, you know, so what happens if you get married and your wife quit? I'm going to take her back home to her mama. I said, then you ain't ready for marriage. Because holy matrimony say you are supposed to provide a husband. If your wife worked, that's a blessing. Now, if y'all want to challenge me on it, I'm open to it because I take you all the way back to Jewish customs when it was written. It is a man's responsibility. Thank God that women help. We love y'all, appreciate y'all. Y'all wonderful and beautiful. And please don't quit on the brothers. You know, it'd be some pitiful brothers out there. Some of y'all strong women. Wonder Woman women. Come on, Wonder Woman. But now you ain't supposed to be carrying everything now. And if you got more in him, I might, might, might need to say he might not be the one. Because if he ain't got no plan that he can, mm, yeah, I can do bad by myself. Come on, Tina, what love got to do with this now? We can't pay no bills. You know? Here's what I want to, I want to give you this closing. Don't let someone change who you are. Because people will try to reduce you to fit them. But see, if you didn't have all that, you were independent. No, it ain't that you miss independent. It's, it's that you have something. Well, you, you try to do everything for yourself. No, it ain't that you try to do everything for yourself, but if I'm going to wait on you, I'm already behind. Can you take me to a place? If you can't, I may as well stay by myself. That's just the truth. Now, that's for the women now. Now, men, don't y'all be asking nobody, can you take care of me? No. <laughs> can I stay with you? No. Because listen, 
You can, how you gonna boss somebody? You ain't bought no sheets, no spoons, no forks, no knives. You can't even keep the car running. But you know, you 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 wanna boss somebody? Man, you better go somewhere and sit down. Cause these women now they don't take what your mama took and your grandma took. These women will leave and slap you. These women will fight now. And and some of y'all don't want an independent woman. Some of y'all don't. Y'all just want some help. Okay. Well, he said he went to the moon. <laughs> Some of y'all want them kind of men. Get them, they out there. But here's what I want to say to you as I close. Don't make excuses. Make changes. This is a season because you know what the number 12 is? Governmental order. If you haven't planted your seeds and you are the governor of your life, you, you are the king, the queen of your life, this is the time to set your standards. Okay, don't talk to me if you only can call me on the payphone. If you can't pay, if you got a, a payphone, uh, you got to pay weekly, then you can't pay no bills over here. So there ain't no need of me and you talking because all you're going to do is fool me. Y'all in. Y'all in. Because <laughs> here's the thing, here's the rule. Correct me if I'm wrong. Women, I got women in here, right? You all can quit work. Government gonna take care of you. I don't care what your race is, what your nationality is, government will take care of you. We quit work. I, you said it, we. You better act like you got a health condition or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being honest. The, the government, the law is set up to take care of women. Y yeah, you really get help. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm not saying you should do that, but I'm just saying, as a man, I can't go down there and get what you get. So if the government won't give him nothing, why would you? But he said he gonna get on his feet. Let him get on his feet first. And then after he get on his feet, come talk to your pastor. And your pastor will say, let's see if he can stay on his feet. Because y'all can't be sleeping at my house. <laughs> him, you, him, and them. Y'all can't get too many people. I'm old. I'm 60. I can't take the noise. I can't take the noise like that. I can't take all the noise. I hold one TV on at a time. <laughs> y'all have all my TVs on. Let me give you this real quick. Don't make excuses. Make changes. Now, this is the kicker here. Later will be too late. This is your time. This is, this is the winter time. This is the winter series. This is the time to lay out your plan. Don't make excuses. Make changes. This is the time to modify. Later will be too late. Changes have to be made before later comes along. I'll say it again. Don't make excuses. Don't make excuses. Don't, don't, don't accept them either. Make changes. To you and audience, I hope you've learned something this evening. Don't make excuses. I know somebody probably turned off because they got mad. Like, ah, you know, time, time, the road changes. They do. But let me ask you something. When did the Bible change? I just want to get to heaven and see the Lord say, I told him to be the head of the home and, you know, to work in the field. I'm going to change that, child. Honey, I, I should bring that up to the 21st century. It's all right if he lazy. He ain't got to have a job. Let him be the daddy of 20. If you think Jesus is going to say that, you ain't going to the heaven that I know this up there. Hmm. There's somebody like to choke. <laughs> Don't make excuses because I can't keep up, y'all. Don't make excuses, make changes. Later will be too late. Ask me what does that mean? When you think you should have a harvest, you still gonna have a seed. Later will be too late. You can't wait till you get 60 something years old and then complain about social security. You should have known social security wasn't no good when you was 30. Do what now? 
Yeah, 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 because see what happens is I, I talked to a guy today. He's like, man, I, I said, man, listen, let me give you a secret. I don't know what the number means. I have to look it up. The, the, the government gives you about 50 years in the workforce. Most people can start working at 15. What in the world have you done with your money? It's too late. And, and see, can I be honest with you all? Yeah, th we can call this the afterbirth. We keep the, the reason I'm saying this is because I'm seeing people 60, 70 years old having to lose their homes because they don't have the taxes and can't keep up the insurance and having to work and having uncle, uncle Arthur and brother Arthur and rheumatitis and bursitis and all these things and you're still having to go work 40 hours because here's the real dynamic. When you get to a certain age in your 40s and your 50s, most people are just now waking up, are just now waking up in their life. And here's the problem. When you get 60, your house payments don't be less. You still got 15 years, 20 years on a house. How are you going to do that? You, you're just finally knowing what a good car is. You didn't understand consumers report and, and looking at reports and seeing the value. So now you, you done spent 10 years buying junk, car every other year, fixing it up. I told the guy, came by today, I said, every time I see you working on this car, I've seen you three weeks in a row, and three weeks in a row, you're working on this car. Some things ain't worth continuing to work on. It wore out. When I realized my car, the Acura that I had, the insurance company wouldn't give me but $500, and the trade-in wouldn't give me but $300. The insurance was more than the car was worth. Just paying the yearly insurance. The yearly insurance was maybe six, seven hundred dollars. And that's with collision and what's the other one? Liability. So I done spent three thousand dollars on the motor. Thank you. That chimes in the room worth more than truck. You done did all that paint on that truck. This is why I say, this is why I say we, because see, and this is what I'm trying to say here in the after hour, is don't get caught up with everything people say. Everything people say is not true. You, you got to study and learn and, and observe. And then the thing of it is, like you say, and I was telling him, I said, when you had fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 from whatever, an accident, death, whatever, where did you put the money? See, we spend money. Money is to go to work for you so you will always have money. And as we have gotten older, and you're right, and I always say this, people who plan for retirement are still wondering because they are living longer if they're going to have enough money. So we got to get serious. And here's the help. Can I help us out? I don't know your ages. I don't know how old you are. But if God can make a way for Caleb because he was faithful, because God told Caleb when he was 20, everywhere your foot go, it will be your land. Caleb had to wait 40 years to get it. But what he said was, Lord, I have preserved myself. And I have strong young men with me that we can take the mountain. And Caleb and his heirs to this day, still own that land in Canaan. So even if you get older, remember I used to tell Mother Spencer, even if you get older, if you stay before God, God will have someone come along and bless you. But God's not going to continue to bless us and we keep doing us. We're not faithful, we're not consistent. See, that's why I, when I come down and, you know, everybody gone and I'm still here and people are like, yeah, you know, church over, I be gone. Oh, no, no. I got to spend time praying. I have sat in this church for hours. I'm not going to tell y'all my prayer bench because some of y'all be out there trying to put some voodoo on it. But I got a prayer bench in this church. And I have sat on that bench for 18 plus years.
That's why God has, and we don't owe nobody. Now, we ain't got a whole lot of money right now. But we ain't, ain't nobody knocking on our door. We ain't got no eviction notice. Because when God tells you, and you stay before God, and God tells you to move, he's going to supply. He's going to connect you with people. I've seen people get houses. I've seen people get jobs that God knows and they know and I know that they didn't have no business getting. But God opened the door and said, you know what? We can trust you. We like your personality. We're going to pay $60,000 a year. All I want you to do is sit here and check everybody walk in this door. God will do it. You don't have to be the smartest and the best and the brightest. But God can take whatever your gift is and connect you with somebody that connect you with somebody and you get there. So I, I'll say it again as I close. This is just the afterbirth. Don't make excuses. Make changes now. And, and listen, be definitive in your prayer. Now I know this is going to piss some people off because this is the afterbirth. The producer can get his cut. Don't ask God for nobody broke. Male or female? How you gonna get behind and get behind somebody that's behind, already behind? <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> they gonna eat up what you got. Then y'all really gonna be behind. And there was one guy, he said it so eloquently. He said, listen, most people meet each other. Uh, Hope had said this to me. When they are both struggling or both in a bad place in their life, they're crawling, that's what he used the term. He said, but what happens? He said, and when you're crawling, you're okay. Because he crawling, she crawling. But what happens when you get up? And they still crawling. You're unequally yoked. Unbalanced. Unbalanced. See, if you're waiting on her to get better, if you're waiting on him to get better, that's why I said we ain't got no time to lose. So then you get trapped by your feelings and your emotion when you're dealing with something that can't go where you're going. Because most people get connected, and, and I've learned this through church. Most people come to Christ when mama died, daddy died, grandma died, things are bad in their life, they think they got a disease in their life, then they come to Christ. And as soon as they get some medication, you can't find them. But they're hollering all over the cassock and the slob and I'm going to give my life to Jesus. And, and people have altar calls at the funeral and 50 people walk up. Yeah, they do that now. And 50 people walk up, oh, give my life to Christ, Lord. And go out the door and don't ever come back. Do it now? Yeah, revivals. Oh, you can baptize everybody. Pool just hot. Pool is the new hot. The church pool is the new hot tub. Come springtime, you can't find one of those people. Make no excuses. Make changes now. Ask me what does that really mean? God seeing your faithfulness. God sees that you're going to put him first. Oh, I know service ain't for 40 minutes, but you know what? I'm going to church because I'm checking off the box that God sees my faithfulness. So now when I pray to my God, he sees Campbell will get up in the cold, drive out in the dog, when deer flying all across the highway, and he really don't want his car to get hit, but he just gonna drive in faith. Now, don't let me hear the deer tonight now. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be something. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be some issues. <laughs> Am I here the dog? Somebody asked me about that. I said, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to call the record. I'm going to call my deacons to come get me. I'm not going to sit out there in the dark and I ain't got but 1% of a phone. I'm going to be prepared. And I'm going to have Jesus and the disciples on both sides. Because one of y'all might want to roll up on a brother. See what he got. <laughs> he, there's going to be some smoke in the dark. <laughs> but I'm just saying, don't make excuses. Make changes. Later will be too late. Changes have to happen before later comes. Don't ever think your life is over. It's time to see the value that God has put in you. And let me tell you something, you're worth it. Every nightmare, every pain, every burden, every, every bad relationship, you're worth it. 
God is not finished with you. You have some more ground to cover. God bless you. I'll see you soon.